this is the big thing. I, we, I haven't talked about this for maybe a couple months, but rec most recently, of course, the rule set and a little bit more about how this is going to be organized. This is, a, of course, I'm talking about the Intel uh, World Open featuring Street Fighter V and Rocket League, right? Basically, the Intel World Open is being run alongside the Olympics in Tokyo 2020. And uh, it's going to be featuring Rocket League and Street Fighter V, both with $250,000 prize pools, which is, if you, you know, if you haven't been paying attention, that's a lot. Street Fighter, I think that's on par with Capcom Cup. For Rocket League, I'm not sure, I'm not too sure, actually, but 50 k nothing to sneeze at, right? What I think is interesting is kind of how the, uh, how it's been organized, though. I'll show you guys what I mean. So Street Fighter V at this event, $250,000 prize pool. We just said that. 3v3 team battle is the big thing. The tournament. This Intel World Open will bring the best Street Fighter V players in the world across uh, from the globe, across the globe. They will have a chance. Get $250,000, etc., etc. Right? You know what's going on. The goal is to create a top eight, an eight-man bracket towards the end, featuring eight teams from across the world to compete for that 250k prize. Uh, you can see the timeline that they plan. They have open qualifiers, closed qualifiers, a live cup qualifier in Poland that's going to be in June, and then the Intel World Open finals, which will take place at the olympics here in tokyo a week before evo now that's big see what you have to understand is this capcom pro tour this year has been gutted if you take a look at the capcom pro tour schedule you notice that they decided that this year run it in terms of two seasons and one reason why is that they didn't want any possible interference with this the olympics for capcom for street fighter 5 what you guys have to understand is this event has been their motivation and their goal for years. They want to see this game at the Olympics. They've been wanting to see it. They've been wanting it to build towards that. Evo is not even a part of Capcom Pro Tour this year. Isn't that wild? That's crazy to me. They did. They wanted to focus all their attention and resources on this event is the reason why. So check out these rules. All LAN events will be played exclusively on PC and use dedicated battle lounge online lobbies as opposed to versus mode. Think about that for five seconds. So, can you imagine, we go to a tournament, everybody brings their PlayStations, we all get on Wi-Fi and play NetPlay sitting right next to each other? That's essentially what they want to do here. For a stage this big, that's kind of the, that's the qualification process you're looking at. Check this out. All players on a team must come from the same country. Not that weird, right? It's built around national competition. I don't think that's that weird. Open qualifiers will run in a single elimination format. Hold that thought. Closed qualifiers are in double Okay, uh, that's, okay, we're getting there. Take a look at the schedule. There's 12 countries. Those 12 countries are going to host two to eight online qualifiers, respectively. And it's going to depend on your country, whether, whether you have two, whether you have eight, all to build up towards a, a national tournament where the winner of that national tournament, that team will then go to the qualifiers in Poland. The end result is going to be 20 teams representing 12 countries and eight regional teams. Out of those 20 teams, seven will advance to the final stage in Tokyo to play against the Japanese national team. These are the countries that are going to be represented. Brazil, China, the Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic, that was a pick that we that we made. DR has had just so much more activity and it feels like they've had a lot more prominence since Meta especially since MENA got that uh, Capcom Cup Championship a few years ago. France, Hong Kong, China, Korea, Russia. That's a bit of a surprise, maybe, but uh, I'm kind of interested to see how that pans out. Singapore, not that strange. Chinese Taipei, United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom, and United States. Those countries will also have a chance to be represented through the regionals here. You can see they have the North America where Canada and Mexico are included. Central America, South America, Europe 1, 2, Asia, Oceania, and Middle East and Africa. That sounds cool in theory until you start to dig a little bit deeper and you start to put it all together. For these 12 online qualifiers and these regional online qualifiers, they're going to be running net play single elimination tournaments where the top placers in each respective tournament will then advance to the next stage of the competition they've already announced some of the dates for the J for the uh, jp qualifiers and a lot of these are uh going to be around similar times for some of the other countries as well but this is an idea of how it's going to work so if you look at japan where they have online qualifiers right remember these are single elimination net play limited to 256 players the top eight of each of these respective net play tournaments will advance to the J japan qualifier final there's still a lot of details that they have they haven't really announced or done a really good job of explaining yet like for example my question is are these qualifier finals going to be also on net on net play I don't know yet or is it going to be offline is it going to be offline with 
where you have to play on quote unquote land setting. In the end, the four players that emerged from this Japan, Japan qualifier final, this national qualifier, those four players will represent Team Japan in the final. And that's going to be three players and one substitute. That's how this team stuff is working. Most of this stuff just sounds weird on the surface until you start to dig into the rule book. There's just so much just awkward shit about this. For example, like clothing. Uh, Intel World Open will provide jerseys for all players at offline events. What? For a lot of organizations and teams that sign or get a uh, competitive fighting game player, I can tell you guys something that's very important for those organizations, whether it be their jersey, their shirt, whatever, their apparel has to be represented through that player. So for right off the bat, them to make a call, yeah, we're going to give you clothes to wear. That doesn't make a lot of the big organizations and teams happy. That's not something that they mess with. Any kind of headwear is forbidden. Penalties will be awarded for minor violations of this rule. Players will not be allowed to, yeah, okay, okay. So right off the bat, they're telling you what to wear. Kind of weird. You just keep, you guys can look through this yourself. I'll put a link to it. This, I think, is really funny. You remember a couple years ago when Chris T got really mad that they had the finals at 10 a.m.? And he was like, man, why are we getting up at 10 a.m.? Missing media obligations. If you show up late for media day, they take a portion of your winnings. <laughs> They'll legit dock your pay for, for not showing up or for showing up late the media day. And yeah, you can tell a lot of this is also because of its, e its ESL partnered, right? ESL, of course, ran Capcom Cup this past year, which came under a lot of fire. A lot of this stuff seems to be kind of copy and pasted from, from their manuals and rulebooks. I wonder if some of this stuff is subject to change. I would imagine it is. I think especially if they get enough negative uh, feedback, they might consider it. Uh, I don't know, man. It's, it, it gets weirder. The, the closer you look at this stuff, it gets pretty strange. Penalties will be severe for cases of substance abuse. I'm just thinking, man, could you imagine if they had this rule for Combo Breaker? What if they ran through the Combo Breaker Hotel <laughs> with, this, with these kinds of rules? No alcohol or psychoactive drugs. No betting. No players, team manager, staff, or organizations are to be involved in betting or gambling. A lot of this stuff to me is, uh, the reason why I bring it up is because was everything that, all this talk about community, all this talk about, think about everything that the scene has kind of built up up until this point. It's all for this? Who is this for? Is it for players? I don't think this is for players. I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, this is, it's to the point where I, I look at it and I'm just kind of like, you know, that's uh, that's definitely not for me. I don't know, man. What do you guys think? Do you think that having the $250,000 prize pool at the end is worth all this kinds of stuff that maybe I think go against a lot of the values and stuff that our community has kind of built up until now? How do you feel about it? Do you think that that's worth it? Is this kind of thing still interesting to you? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below.